What's up, folks? What's going on? How y'all doing? Hope you guys can hear me okay, as always. See some of you have started a little bit of the discussion there in the chat. Um, we'll get started here in just one moment. I'm just fixing some stuff up here real quick. As you can see from the title of the video, the things we will be discussing will be some of these recent box office flops that have happened as of late. And we will also... Uh, go over i'll do a little bit of an overview of what i thought of the third season of the toys that made this not just the power rangers episode but the season overall because i i finally got a chance to watch all of it and i enjoyed it very much i, I think it was a great season uh overall and um uh, I'll, I'll probably just kind of go episode by episode and give my thoughts on what i thought were maybe some of the strengths some of the weaknesses of each particular episode that had come out um and um maybe you know just kind of constructive constructively criticize um and just give an overall opinion on the stuff but just real quick uh if you're on social media and you know other people that subscribe to the channel please feel free to share the stream let them know that we're live if they want to join us in chat that'd be great and uh i plan to go a couple hours today um if possible maybe an hour hour and a half possibly two we'll see um but yeah let's hang out for a bit and let's chat hey what's up what's up gamer thumb what's up buddy Hanging out before your own stream starts. I appreciate that, man. Thank you. Hey, what's going on, Devil Hunter Nero? How you doing, bud? It's been a bit. I know it's been a little while since the last time that I uh, streamed. Uh, just been really busy the, the last couple of weeks. But hopefully now, with the year coming to a close, I'll probably... My, my convention season is pretty much over. That's the other thing, too, is that um, I had to prep for Ranger Stop because I was a vendor there at that show. So as soon as I got back from being out of town... I had to prepare for a convention, so that's why there was no content, why things were kind of slow. There's a lot of Power Rangers content recently only because of the news that has been coming out lately that really uh, kind of by extension pertains to some of the stuff going on with and how it relates pretty much to Power Rangers. If you saw, if you all saw earlier, I released a video um, talking about how the Netflix, hey, what's going on, uh, BurlyCon, uh, how the, the Netflix deal could affect uh, Power Rangers, and uh, we'll see how how that goes. Uh, just give me one second. We could talk a little bit about that as well in this chat. So are you getting uh, the new Ultraman Blu-rays? Um, you know, I'm not sure because here's the thing. Uh, Mill Creek Entertainment. How should I say this? Um, maybe they've improved on it or not. But in the past, whenever I've bought Mill Creek Entertainment products, whether it be DVDs or Blu-rays, they haven't been the best uh, quality, we will say. I'm not saying in terms of their packaging or anything like that, but I, they've, I've had issues with them in the past, like with, um, with like the the Ultraman DVD, the complete series DVD. Um, something happens where where sometimes the the timing isn't right on the subtitles. Um, I had when Mill Creek had released, I believe it was. Um, I want to say it was the Gamera trilogy that they also released at one point in time on Blu-ray. The subtitles for the um, uh, for the um, uh, Japanese for for the Jap for the Japanese version of it um, didn't really sync up. Sometimes they wouldn't show up at all on the Blu-ray for for the Gamera trilogy, and that that was kind of an issue. And then with maybe they've improved since then. Maybe they've improved. Hey, what's up, Esme? Thanks for joining the chat. What's up, Ram Jam? How you doing, buddy? Um, they haven't always worked the best, so I'm a little bit reluctant to drop money on s without knowing, without knowing whether or not those are issues that have been fixed with some of these, with some of these, um, uh, with some of these, um, uh, some of these glaring issues that they've had in the past with some of their previous releases. So unless, unless that stuff has been rectified and like confirmed been rectified, I'm I'm not about to invest any money because it's it's going to be a waste. I mean that. If we're going to be investing money in a product, it should work properly. So uh, it's going good, Ram Jam. Uh, still got to watch toys that made us. I've been, oh, dude, you should, uh, yeah, yeah, no, take your time with it, man. I mean, it's not going anywhere. Uh, do it when you have time. I, I know that, that Disney Plus has a lot of good stuff on it. I saw your review of The Mandalorian, man. I thought it was, you know, it was good. It's informative. It got your reviews, what got me interested in it, Gamer Thumb. So I definitely want to check out Mandalorian. So I might do a, a free trial with Disney Plus just to see because um, it looks interesting. 
uh, Devil Hunter Nero says, been pretty busy, but I did get the first two novels of Rogue Squadron and Shadows of the... Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, Shadows of the Empire is a great book. That's a fantastic book. It's one of the best... Um, one of the best of the older Star Wars uh, novels out there. I never read Rogue Squadron, but Shadows of the Empire, I did read way back in the day when it was first new. So that's a good one. Yeah, you made it, Esme. Thanks for, for being here. You're correct. Yeah, the subs don't match. Yeah, see, so you know what I'm talking about, Broly Khan. You've, so I heard the season three of Marvel's Runaways is going to be the last season. Um, I don't know too much about the Runaways show, but I'm not surprised. Shadows of the Empire is my favorite. Experience. Yeah, that that was for a long time. I think that might have been my favorite, um, you know, non Lucas expanded, you know, Star Wars story as well for a long time. It might still be actually. Now that I think about, it, I can't really think of any other Star Wars novel that I read that I liked as much as Shadows of the Empire. Um, Shadows of the Empire just seemed to fit so perfectly within the um, uh, the old, the original trilogies. Um, continuity so i i that's probably why i liked it the most you know the stuff from timothy zahn was good too the stuff the books that timothy zahn wrote which i think were the first like star wars novels that were allowed to be written out that george lucas was like yeah go ahead um that he approved on so i thought runaways was surprisingly good very different from the comics but i liked it um i've never read i think i've read maybe like two issues ever of the runaways i'd never me personally, I didn't care for it. It wasn't my cup of tea. Um, you know, it felt like to me, like they were trying to be like a new, a kind of, uh, you know, th th to me, it felt like a little bit of a retread of, of something that already done. Cause I'm, I'm a big new mutants fan. So I was just like, it, it just feels like new mutants, except, you know, they're just not, they're just, you know, they're, they're just not like stabilized somewhere. So I, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't care for it, but um, I know a lot of, a lot of, I have a lot of friends that did like the runaway. So do you have any black Friday items that you will wait in line for? No, 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 I don't think so. Um, I don't think I'll be, well, if I do, the only thing I'm looking forward in black Friday, if I can get it at a decent price would be a TV set, and maybe a Nintendo switch. But even then I'm not about to go fight nobody. Hey, what's up, Carano? Thanks for joining the stream, buddy. Um, that'd be the only thing that I probably would be willing to go out for is maybe a new TV set. And even then, but again, I ain't trying to fight nobody. Um, and I'm not trying to cut into family time just to buy, um, a product necessarily. I mean, unless, you know, ain't nothing else going on because that's the only times I've ever gone out for black Friday is whenever there hasn't been really nothing else going on. And it's just me, uh, my, by my lonesome, then, then I've tended to go out for black Friday. Still need to get the Thrawn series. I have to check that out. Black Friday online prices usually better. Than yeah, that's true too. Um, it seems like, especially this year, it seems like a lot of places are doing Black Friday early. So I guess because they don't want to get, they don't want their stores to get slammed on those days. So th I guess they're doing. A lot of places are starting earlier, so I guess to better mitigate the amount of people that show up. So, and sometimes, sometimes Cyber Monday sales are better too for electronics. So. Bunch of movies on my phone, it's all cheaper, and I just ordered it. There you go, boom! I I need to I need to maybe do something like that. Then I'm now watching Common Rider double double episodes to celebrate his upcoming 10th anniversary. Uh, Common Rider double, um, I watched all of it. That was one of the last Super Sentai's that I saw in its entirety. Or Super Sentai's, what am I saying? Common Riders that I saw in its entirety. I thought it was okay. I didn't think it was as good as people have made it out to be. People definitely overhyped it to me, but it was a decent series. It was solid. Um, but let's get into, we're going to, we're going to get into, um, here in just a second. Let me pull up some articles here that we're about to get into. Um, let's see about, and I know that, uh, gamer thumb in the chat, I know that he saw this movie and <laughs> he had nothing, uh, nothing good to say about it and that's terminator dark fate um i know he if you guys haven't uh actually you know what let me share gamer gamer thumbs um review of the movie in the chat so you guys can check it out and that'll that'll kind of sum up uh a, a lot of um how people feel about it here let's see so 
Uh, let's see. Or people that have seen it. So just bear with me one sec here, and I'll see if I can pull that up real quick. Um, yep, Esme is here, y'all. She's here. She's here. She's here to hang. She's going to be chilling with us today. All right, let's see. Um, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. So, let's see. Oh, yeah. thought this was pretty – I thought th this was actually the, the article that I thought was was pretty um, – uh, that I liked. And it's from Bleeding Fool. Not Bleeding Cool. Bleeding Fool did an article on it that I thought um, kind of summed up what everybody kind of felt about it a little bit here. So – about to share screen here just one sec let me just get this ready for y'all real quick tug would tug would be a loot you know he'd be uh going crazy right now if you heard me say that y'all be careful about spamming emojis in the chat youtube will delete your channel be careful guys uh as some oh yeah i didn't that, that's something that happened to markiplier didn't it somebody was putting emojis or a bunch of people were putting emojis and then all of a sudden the accounts started getting bad yeah, Ram Jam. Um, universally, it, it's been universally it's been panned. Uh, nobody, nobody likes it, and it's it's interesting because with the recent movies that have flopped, um, the recent movies that have flopped, that being Terminator, Dark Fate, and now and now uh, Charlie's Angels, I, I think that we're getting to a point with some of these movie critics where they're realizing that they can no longer deny that, you know, them trying to push this, this, uh, you know, woke or social justice type of narrative is not going to help the movie. You know what I mean? It, people just want a good story. You know what I mean? Um, Cause I mean, think about the, the early two thousands, Charlie's angels movies. Those I remember people were enthusiastic about seeing those. All my friends, all my guy friends, especially were just like, Oh man, I want to go watch that. And they did go watch it and they loved it. You know what I mean? Not that those were, those were uh, movies that were masterpieces of story writing, but they were enjoyable as action movies. And, um, you know, as something that, you know, you could just go and enjoy as a, as a good popcorn flick at the movie. So I remember, and, and for the most part, um, they were universally liked by people that went to go see them. The first one more than the, more so than the second one, from what I remember, but for the most part, they were people liked them. Nobody had really anything bad to say about the original uh, Charlie's Angels movies from the 2000s, from the early 2000s. So the accounts are back in YouTube's actually admitted, yeah. Oh, okay, that's good. That's good to know, uh, Devil Hunter Nero. Hold on. I got a hook. I got a hook. Ask me up here real quick. Give me one sec, y'all. There we go. Give her. She's part of the Wrench Army now, as Tug would say. Yeah, exactly. Um, exactly, Kai. They're, they just need to, you know, not worry so much about pushing this this woke kind of narrative and just, just tell a good story. Just tell a good story with good characters. I mean, for the most part, people aren't looking. If a character is well-written, people see beyond their gender. They see beyond their race. They see beyond those, those things. You know, they, they just like seeing a good character and a, and a good story being told. That's it, you know? And that seems to be the problem that these companies, they're losing millions of dollars trying to appease a very, very, very vocal minority of people that, that actually get upset about this stuff when for the most part the general public really does doesn't care. They're not they're not about it. So we'll go over this one right now real quick and I'll share a screen with y'all. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Gamer Thumb. Well-written characters should always be the main priority, and that's the thing. They don't prioritize on that anymore. They are just looking to get those internet backpats or those, um, those, those, those likes or cheap retweets, whatever, or, or, or just that that kind of emotional validation that really is not going to do anything for for their bottom line. You know, what I mean, like I said, it's a very 
a very small vocal minority of people that actually care about that stuff, you know, that will actually ma make a deal about it. And, and typically, let's be honest here, the people that complain the most are not, they're usually not the people that go out and support it anyways. They rarely ever support something with their money. I mean, I'm not saying that they, that they absolutely don't, but a lot of times they, they, they don't, a good, a good majority of them don't, they don't, they don't show up. Um, casting view is still decent. Um, I, I mean, for me, the movie Power Rangers, the 2017 movie, uh, you know, I think you all already know my feelings of that. But, um, well written characters, the story arcs will be, yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. That's exactly right, Devil Hunter Nero. That's exactly right. That's what's going to draw people. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this here real quick so let's see i'm gonna share one specific here okay all right and okay let's look this one over real quick so this says, one of the biggest Hollywood film franchises has officially been terminated. This is from Bleeding Fool, just for y'all to know here real quick. Oh, and let me share Gamer Thumbs um, review of it so you guys could check that out. But this is the article from Bleeding Fool, and I'll go ahead and share the um, – go ahead and share the uh, – share Gamer Thumbs. Did Gamerthum do a review of it? Oh, Gamerthum, you didn't do a review of it? I thought you did. Oh, no, 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 that's right. You said something about it online. That's right. I think you said something about it on your um, uh, social media, right? Hey, B Bear Gaming, what's up? All right, so. All right, let's go back to this article real quick. Sorry about that. Okay, so one of the biggest Hollywood film franchises has officially been terminated. Terminator Dark Fate utterly bombed in its debut over the weekend, grossing less than $28 million domestically, which is far behind expectations. The domestic opening is well below studio projections and a disappointing result for a movie that cost $185 million to produce and several millions more to market. Overseas, it just earned... It just... It earned just under $95 million to date, including a weak launch in China of only $28 million, bringing its global total to $123 million. Business Insider interviewed several industry analysts who seemed surprisingly perplexed by what the actual problem was, but they had plenty of highly educated guesses. Dark Fate stands to lose more than $120 million of the studios, Skydance Media, Paramount, and Fox. According to The Hollywood Reporter, Fox handled international distribution marketing, another post-Disney merger flop. To, for uh, Fox's film business, which suffered 170 million third quarter operating loss earlier this year. The mythology has been rebooted so many times without much success. Jeff Bach, the exhibitor relations senior box office analyst, said the Terminator uh, said of the Terminator franchise, it's pretty clear audiences have had enough. Yeah, you think? Yeah, I mean, these guys don't seem, I mean, it's it's pretty simple. It's pretty simple when we look at it. Um you just they took a dump on it from the very beginning am i right uh gamer thumb uh basically they look people got really upset with terminator genesis because they made john connor a bad guy i thought it was an interesting uh, you know i while i admit that the genesis was not a good movie either um you know i thought i i gave them a little bit of a pass with it because I'm like, okay, well, they're trying to do something new with the story. That's, that's kind of interesting. Um, John should have been saved in the end, of course, but the whole thing is look, John Connor is central to the story. That's been established since the very first movie prior to him being born that his, you know, John Connor, he's, he's going to be this great leader. Um, John Connor is basically the savior of, of, of the future you know, that's been well established. I mean, if you want to do something different um, and have that, you can't really change that and have that be someone else when that's already been established lore within the series. Just let that be for that. You might as well just start off completely different 
movie, right? If you want to tell a, a story of a, a post-apocalyptic world that's been run over by machines and want to have it be that somebody else is going to be the central character of that, I guess you could do that. Of course, people would just go ahead and call it a copy off of Terminator. But really, all this was was a cash grab. You know, Terminator was put in just so they could go ahead and tell this new story. Um, what's up, great uh, Smunkin? Welcome to the stream. Let's see. Sent you a screenshot with my tweet if you want to look at it. Yeah, I'll take a look at that. And well, what's up, Dave Marks? It's been a bit. How you doing, bud? No, I haven't compared um, the box office budget and profits, but it's it's pretty obvious that Charlie's Angel. Um, I I mean, I guess I could look that up as well just to do a comparison. But we all know that Charlie's Angel, the two thousands one, did great in the box office. At least John Connor was still important. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He still had. He was he was still uh, an important figure in that movie. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Kai, I think that's a good way to put it. Yeah, it had it had a good twist, but it was poorly executed. Um, I think the movie would have been better if it wasn't. Yeah, well, that, but also the fact that they're just telling the same story. They're just telling the same story. Um, over again they're not doing anything original it's one thing all right if you're gonna go ahead and get rid of john connor i guess i mean you know it might be um it might be a good idea to tell a completely new story but all they're doing all they did was what replace skynet with legion with the legion system and you know replace john connor with a uh with a, a woman that also happened to be a minority because you know they got to check off those boxes make sure that, that they check off those boxes so um yeah i mean it's no surprise that this was doomed to fail and they're looking at it like they don't understand why i mean it's it's pretty simple i mean you know the proof the proof is already in the pudding let's go ahead and look at this though real quick let's see if we could find the box office numbers for Charlie's Angels, you know, real, the original one, Charlie's Angels. Let's see. 2000. Let's look at box office mojo is usually a pretty good indicator of what we get there. Let's see. And then we'll, let's see. And then we'll look at the box office number so far for Charlie's Angels 2019. Let's see. Angels 2019. Box. Mojo. Let's see. All right. So let's see. All right. Let's see. Wow. Okay. Let's see. This was the, yeah, this was released November 3rd, 2000. So interesting. Yeah. So the new one released in November, just like the original one did. Um, so we'll do a little bit of a comparison here with the box office numbers. Um, what's up, Roblox tube? What's going on? Yeah, it looks like, yeah, what uh, Devil Hunter Nero said, and I'll show it real quick. He's he's pretty much spot on with the um uh, with the number there, but I'll go ahead and share it on screen here for the rest of y'all to see real quick. Um, let's go to that real quick. We'll go to the box office numbers for 2019 or 2000, and then we'll look at the one for 2019. It's, mm, mm, mm. all right, is this the... Okay, I think this is the one for 2000. Nope, that's 2019. My bad. Let's go back. Give, give me one second, y'all. Streamyards, you know, it's a little, uh, it's a little funky here. So, let's see. Um, go to this one. There we go. What the heck? Why is it keep doing that one? This is the one I want to share. Hold on. Hold on. Wait a minute. This thing is not working with me, y'all. Please bear with me. 
All right, let's see. Let's see if it works now. God bless America. Anyways, all right, look, we'll just we'll just look at the new one for now. Okay, so you can see what it grows here. Wow, this is this is bad, really bad. Domestic so far, eight million three hundred and fifty one thousand one hundred nine. That is horrible. That is horrible. As opposed to the um, uh, original one, which domestically it grossed overall. Let's see, one hundred twenty five million, one hundred twenty five million three hundred and five thousand five hundred and forty five. Okay, so worldwide, like Devil Hunter Nero said, about 264 million it did worldwide. So, yeah, six, way, way more successful in comparison to the one that's recently been released. Um, does anyone even care about Charlie's Angels anymore? I don't think they're going to care anymore after this last one. Um, you know, they might have had a better chance grossing. You know, even though I know they're not, they're, they're a little bit older now, but maybe if they had gotten back, uh, who was in the original one? I think it was Lucy Liu, Drew Barrymore, and uh, Cameron Diaz, I believe, were in the 2001. They might have had a better chance of grossing better if they had done like a Charlie's Angels 3 with them in it, even though I know they're a little bit older now um, and maybe not as age appropriate. But I think just for nostalgic reasons, I think that um, people would have been more likely to see that. I mean, none of them have aged out to the point where they still, that they don't look um, attractive or, or might not be physically capable of doing stuff. Um, they're, they're not that old yet. So, um, I mean, obviously they're, I would say they're, they're all younger than Linda Hamilton. So, I mean, they, they would have been, they probably still, still would have been capable of doing a lot of the uh, physical stuff that would have been required of them in the new Charlie's angels movies. But it's, it's the same old thing. It's again, it's, it's these movies are failing because they are not putting anything into the characters themselves. They're just worried about checking off boxes and making sure that they, that they represent them a certain way instead of just trying to tell a good story with them and going off of the strength of their characters. So let me see. They should have saved John Connor as a bad guy for the theater instead of spoiling in the trailer. Yeah, um, that would have probably helped that movie a little bit too. Yeah, th that's a good point too, Gamer Thumb. Why couldn't uh, John just have gone and lived a normal life since they changed the future? Yeah, they could have done that. <laughs> oh, you're drunk, <laughs> Dave Marks. Oh, Dave Marks, you so cray. All right. Um, maybe, maybe, but even then they, they, they could have, they could have gotten somebody to replace Bernie Mac though. Right. They could have gotten somebody maybe like an Anthony Anderson, or I know it's not the same. I mean, Bernie Mac is Bernie Mac, but, um, they, they could have gotten somebody to, to replace him that would have, I, I they could have potentially filled that role. Um, and has the comedic, you know, the same kind of comedic timing or, you know, could probably draw the same amount of people, maybe Cedric the Entertainer, who knows. When it comes to Charlie's Angel, the franchise is kind of death. So that's nostalgia passing down the torch instead of going Ghostbusters. Yeah, yeah. Could try and get Bill Murray back. Yeah, that too. That's also a good point, uh, B Bear Gaming. Yes, trailers do give away a lot of what's in these movies nowadays instead of just letting, um, you know, it's not like like the older days, I think, where, where they kind of let you figure out what was going to happen, but I think they do it in an attempt to just, it's obvious that they're doing it in an attempt to get more broader appeal to have people come watch these movies. Um, but it can backfire because then you, you, um, uh, you go ahead and, um, uh, you go ahead and you sacrifice, um, the, the potential for, for people just, you know, obviously people people are not going to experience that for themselves you ruin that a lot so the enthusiasm kind of goes down after that okay so this is what gamer thumb had had posted um <laughs> i'm going to share his his uh his tweet real quick this is what gamer thumb had said right after he had watched it 
and I hope it's okay that I share this. Um, the, well, this is this was your tweet, so this is actually still available on your on your Twitter. But let me see. This is funny. So he had to just got out of Terminator Dark Fate. John Connor never mattered. Surprisingly bad CG. Retail T2, but with girls, cringy dialogue, replace characters with boring new ones, but Sarah and Arnold were awesome. Overall, I hate this movie as much as Ghostbusters 2016. There you go. And I think that's all you need to know right there. I think that pretty much sums it up uh, on how bad that movie was. But getting back to Charlie's Angels for a moment, um, I think there's this huge disconnect, too, that Hollywood is having. Why they're, they're, There's... People are in denial, right? Like Elizabeth Banks, who was the director of the movie. I think she's in denial as to why this movie did bad, or she doesn't want to. Um, I don't think she wants to see or want to accept the possibility that maybe the reason why people didn't like it is because of some of the agenda that was obviously shoehorned into it. You know, there's, I'm trying to find the article where she says basically that. The reason why, well, I think it's in the Bounding into Comics article here. Ah, here we go. We'll go ahead and share this real quick, and we'll go over this article. And then we'll talk about uh, the toys that made us after this. So just bear with me a little bit more, y'all. Um, <clears throat> but, um, yeah, let's check this out real quick. And y'all tell me what you think about this. All right, let's see. All right, later, Thumb. Take care, buddy. I'll, yeah, I'll I'll, um, uh, I'll check your stream out after after I hop off mine here. What's up, Carlo? Uh, no, I'm I am not streaming this on Twitch right now. I'm just I'm on stre just streaming here on YouTube. But um, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and look at this article real quick from Bounding into Comics. So <clears throat> this is all very interesting, I think. All right, so it says here. Charlie's Angels director Elizabeth Banks blamed men for the film's box office failure nearly a week before the film hit theaters. In an interview, that's all right. So she was already building in an excuse <clears throat> for this movie's failure. They already, and that's something that we've seen a lot lately with a lot of these movies too, right? We saw it with, I think, Terminator Dark Fate with uh, Tim Miller kind of going off on his little Twitter rant, you know, talking about men being misogynists and things like that, misogophobes as, as uh, uh, Yellow Flash would say, and things like that, already kind of like setting setting the table, right, for an excuse when the movie would inevitably flop as it did. So this is, this is just kind of like, it, it's funny that they're doing this damage control prior to the movies even coming out now because it's, see, and this is where I say there's a little bit of a disconnect or there's just flat out intellectual dishonesty among these Hollywood elites. Cause look at this. So Charlie's angels director, Elizabeth bank blamed men for the film's box office failure nearly a week before the film hit theaters in an interview with Australia, Harold son bank spoke on the, on why the film needs to make money and who's to blame if it doesn't. Okay. She stated, look, people have to buy tiff tickets to this movie too. This movie is to make money. She added, if this movie does make money, it reinforces a stereotype in Hollywood that men don't go see women do action movies, which is a absolute lie. That's a flat out lie. All right. We all know that that there's nothing to substantiate what she just said. Okay. Because if that were the case, how do you explain? And it's not to say that all the movies that she did were good, but how do you explain men always wanting to go see Milia Jovovich movies? You know what I mean? Uh, granted not all of them were good i mean there's a, she did a lot of very bad movies but it's but you can't really that's not really an argument to make because look we saw wonder woman gross well when scarlett uh johansson has been in certain movies uh, a lot of people have watched them um so it's not this thing of men consciously trying to avoid movies that have a female action star you know that's not true. Like I said, you know, when we look back at the original Charlie's Angels, right? Or the one from 2000, I should say, not the 70s TV show, but the 2000s movie, a lot of guys went to go watch that movie. A lot. You know what I mean? You had Cameron Diaz, who a lot of my friends absolutely loved Cameron, Cameron Diaz, um, Lucy Liu, and Drew Barrymore. A lot of people loved all three of those actresses. You know what I mean? And if for not anything else, they went to see it because of them, because they, 
you know, these were all very attractive women. These were women that were at the peak of their careers at that, at that point in time. And, um, uh, People just, uh, yes, yeah, some people probably just went because they thought they were eye candy. But, the, you know, there's people that were genuine fans of them, guys included. You know, Cameron Diaz was doing a lot of stuff back around that time. If you all remember, she was doing, you know, she had really hit it big with uh, There's Something About Mary. That's that's what really kind of turned the corner for her. And she was in just about everything around that time. Those early 2000s, uh, Cameron Diaz was in a lot of movies. She was in, you know, action movies. She was in dramas. She was in comedies. She was doing a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff and and um uh, people genuine you know generally and genuinely liked her in most everything she did she could pretty much do no wrong she she had so much range as an actress that there's people that wanted to see that movie just support to support her as an actress not necessarily just to ogle her you know people that were legitimate fans of hers because cameron diaz is a very talented actress you know what i mean so the fifth element. Yeah, that's what you're talking about right there. Exactly. They set the they set the bar low just to make excuses. Yeah, uh, Carlo Nasser, exactly. How are you going to say that it's, you know, Spider-Man's fault? You know, no, it's because, you, <laughs> you know, if you make a bad movie, if it's obvious that your movie has an agenda tied to it, that you're pushing this, this, specific kind of agenda and it's that transparent and you make it obvious right from the jump people aren't going to go watch it that's just how it is people are immediately turned off and like oh it's going to be that kind of movie well i don't want to watch it now because i'm not going to go pay ten dollars to go sit in a theater for two hours to watch this movie that is going to preach to me about how much of a massagephobe i am or you know or or how much of a bad person I am because I, you know, because I, because of what's in between my legs, you know what I mean? Nobody wants that. Yeah. The amazing Spider-Man movies. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's a good point too, Dave Marks. They weren't the, of all the Spider-Man movies, the amazing Spider-Man movies, I, to me are the worst in my opinion. You know, I, I'm not saying that the newer ones are super great, uh, I think they have their issues too, but I like them a lot more than I like the Amazing Spider-Man movies. I'll tell you that much. I don't like either of the Amazing Spider-Man movies. I think they're the worst uh, Spider-Man movies that have come out. My opinion, of course. Yeah, the fifth element, remember, that was like the breakout role <clears throat> for Milia Jovovich. And once that hit big, people were all over Milia Jovovich. Anything that she was in, people wanted to check it out because... She just, she just had that appeal as an action star, you know, and for a, for a good while, she was like the female action star, right? In the, in the late nineties to early two thousands, it was all Milia Jovovich. I mean, she did way too many of the Resident Evil movies. Um, the first one I think is the only one that was like semi-decent. Um, and all the rest of them were, were bad after that, but look, she's, she was still able to do them. Right. And all, even though those movies aren't good, um, again, you know, there, there was people that, that went to go see them and didn't have to worry about any kind of, uh, didn't have to worry about being preached to when they watched them. So, all right, let me see. How good do you think the actors were in Charlie's Angel 2019 film? I don't know because I'm not familiar with any of them outside of Kristen Stewart. And Kristen Stewart, I, for the most, from what I've seen, she's not a very popular actress as it is. There seems to be a lot of people that just generally don't like her as an actress and think that she's not a good actress. Um, and that's been going as far back as when the Twilight movies, you know what I mean? People have been saying that about her since the Twilight movies. So as far as the other two actresses, I don't even know who they are. I'm, and I'm just being completely honest. I have never heard of them. I'm not familiar with their work. Um, they could be better than what they got in that movie. I don't know, but not familiar with their work at all. Never seen anything else that they've been involved with. So let's see what else we got here. Um, trying to look over something here. Um, I wanted to see. So I think. 
Uh, let's see. So, people reminder that the brand recognition. Uh, okay, so it's almost like some of these sites that are talking about its failure seem to, you know, they, they seem to be going easy on it and don't want to. They they don't want to address the elephant in the room when it comes to these movies. Naomi Scott was in the new Aladdin. Yeah, that. Ah, uh, yeah. Saw saw a little bit of that too. Couldn't finish it. That one wasn't good either. <laughs> American Ultra. That's it. Kristen Stewart. She was good in American Ultra, and I have crushed on her since Zathora. Um, that's like that movie that's kind of like Jumanji, right? Except it's a uh, sci-fi game. Oh no! What are you talking about? Devil Hunter Nero. Language. So savage. No, it's all good. Um, exactly, Carano. Yeah, nobody wants to go see a movie that's, you know, you're not paying money to to uh, have a movie preach at you. And if, and if there's something you want to learn, exactly, that's a good point. You'll go watch a documentary or you'll go to a seminar, right? If you want to go learn something or if, if you want to be preached to, you'll go to church, right? So you just want to be entertained for those two hours that you're in that theater. What's up, Carlos uh, San Pedro? Welcome to the stream. She's good, but the poor girl always looks like she's about to cry. You talk about the uh, <laughs> you talk about Kristen Stewart there, uh, the great smunkin. It's hilarious. Yeah, she. Um, I don't know. I mean, I I I've seen the Twilight movies. I've seen them. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, they're, uh, ugh. yeah, not, um, not good. Not good. Not good. Um, pretty, uh, pretty bad in my opinion in terms of, you know, the acting, but you know what? They're, they were fun in a bad way, right? They were good in a bad way. I or I mean, uh, they were bad in a good way, I, I, I would say, because you could make fun of them. So. Your mom has seen most, if not all. What's up, uh, DZ? And the churches are the movies. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. That's a good way to put it. Goldfinger. Goldfinger was great. That had, uh, what's her name from uh, the X-Men movies, right? What is it? Famke Jansen or, or something like that? Or Janison? I, I forget how, how her name is said. So let's see here. All right, so... I think we've discussed that enough. I think we're. Yeah, exactly. That's a good point, Dave Marks. Yeah, no, it, we all know that. That yeah, it, it was it was a movie that was meant for tweens, but it's like I said, they're bad in a in a good way, where you can make fun of them. So, <laughs> watchable, not good. <clears throat> Ugly dolls. That's another box office failure that may have been because it hired pop singers and rappers as voice actors in that film. I have no idea about that one. I didn't, they make one with, they, they made, uh, I think they made a movie. I don't know if it's come out yet called, I think it was called hustlers and it had like Cardi B and it's basically where Cardi B. It's like, it's like strippers that I guess, um, uh, that they, um, uh, what, that they end up, um, what is it like? Um, they like rob men or something. Anyways, we'll move on here to uh, the next topic. Hold on. Let me grab a drink real quick because I'm feeling very, very parched, very, very dry here. Um, so just bear with me one moment. By the way, have you discussed? Uh, let me see. Wait. The movie, you know, Shima says the movie did not come. Did come out several months ago. Hustlers. I mean, oh, okay, it did. Yeah, I was, I was wondering about that. I wonder how that did. All right. Give me one second. Okay. All right. Sorry, I was feeling a little parched there. All right, let's move on to the next. The next thing I wanted to discuss with y'all, then we can talk about whatever you guys want. Um, so I finally got a chance. Yes, yeah, stay. I gotta stay hydrated. Got to. Got to. Um, wanted to talk a little bit about the toys that made us. 
season three. So I finally got a chance to watch the entire thing. Um, not just the episode that I was in, but the entire season. Um, and, uh, I thought it was good. I thought it was good. Um, I'll start off with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles episode. Um, I think that they, with the entire season, I will say this, they did what they were supposed to do, what they were supposed to do really. Um, Hey, what's up? What's up? Broly power maximum. It's been a while, buddy. How you doing? Um, with this season of the toys that made us starting with uh, TMNT, I think with, um, well, overall, I'll say they did what they were supposed to do, of course, which was focus more on the toys. Um, I'd seen some people say that they wish they got more into the history of some of the other stuff, but the name of the show is the toys that made us, of course, so they have to really make it toy centric. And um, uh, with the TMNT episode, I thought they did a good job with kind of starting with the beginning, you know, uh, layered in Eastman's creation of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I think they gave that its fair amount of time. Um, for those of you that haven't seen it yet, I, I will probably spoil a little things here and there. So um, just be forewarned, the stuff I'll be talking about. But um, I thought that they did, a for the short amount of time that these episodes are, they do cover a lot, I think, um, in such a short time frame. So they really have to summarize a lot of things. Now with the TMNT episode, I know there was some things, there's definitely more details that they could have put into it. I think in regards to some of the background history was with some of the stuff they discussed, but I think that they kept it on track with, with the, um, uh, with the, um, uh, um, you know, history of the toys, right. Uh, and how they initially did all that stuff, you know, the, I, I knew about the whole thing with the tails and why they had to take them off and all that. I remember reading about that and um, all that stuff was, was very, very interesting. I also thought that it was a nice touch what they did at the end of the episode. And I won't say it specifically cause I, I really don't want to spoil it for people, but I thought that that it was good timing. It was either really good timing on the part from the, um, uh, you know, from the producers of the toys that made us to, to make that happen. Or I, I don't know if that was already the process of happening or if they had any kind of influence in that happening, but it was, it was nice to see that the, uh, the hatchet, that the hatchet was finally buried between, um, you know, the two people that you'll see in, in that particular episode, uh, Oh man, uh, uh, yeah. He told me you deactivated your account, man. We'll have to, uh, yeah, we'll have to touch base here soon, man. I appreciate it, man. Um, but yeah, the TMNT episode really good. Uh, probably going to be one that is, I, I think, out of all the episodes of the season, it's definitely probably going to be the most emotional for anybody watching it. Uh, definitely the one that has the most drama to it. I would say, but not like in a, in a bad way, just in the sense of, again, that, that it'll probably, uh, it probably elicited the, the most amount of emotions and, and it's probably the most heartwarming, I would say, of all the episodes. Um, moving on to the Power Rangers episode, there was um, things that I heard people saying about the uh, Power Rangers episode, probably, there, there's two camps, right? There's a lot of people that have said they were glad that they talked about the tokusatsu stuff prior to power rangers being released over here you know i was really surprised at how much they focused on common rider and the importance of common rider in regards to super sentai and then eventually of course to power rangers i thought that they did a fair job focusing on what they needed to and really talked about the most pertinent stuff that they needed to of course they could have gone into more detail but at the same time they did what they needed to because at the end of the day, this is more about the toys. They don't, they're not trying to tell the entire history of Super Sentai or how in it, it ended up getting over here as Power Rangers. They're just trying to get to the point of the toys and just give a little bit of a background on how it came into the whole thing came into existence and then focus on the toys, which was the right approach. So the Power Rangers episode I thought was was well done. Uh, of course, I will say that there is probably a little bit of um, revisionist history in that particular episode regarding um, the 
concept, I would say, of how to make the show. Uh, for those of you that have been here on the channel and you've seen the series, my, my series Henshin Time, then you, you probably know what I'm talking about. Um, it was very interesting to see that uh, that uh, Haim wanted to really convey that he, you know, m make it very apparent that he was the one that came up with the idea for um, taking the show and then putting American actors in it and doing all that when obviously that is not, that is not exactly true. Um, that has already been proven to be um, not his idea. You know, one thing that can't be taken away from Haim is that yes, Haim was the one that eventually did get it on TV and um, was the, is the reason why people were able to um, enjoy the series and was able to enjoy that initial success of bringing of, adapting the series, but he was not the guy that initially came up with the concept um, for for presenting it in that manner, we'll say. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, let me see. I, uh, Inoshima says, I, I was personally surprised by the offer of any lip service, let alone such a hefty segment on Japanese tokusatsu and not some simplistic past like other mainstream documentaries on the matter. Yeah, I think, like I said, they did a fair amount of talking about it and really establishing the history of what led to it, right? The importance of that. So I thought that was good. Um, like I said, they, they touched up on all the points that they needed to, that this was something that, of course, was initially created in Japan, that the concept was uh, created by Shotaro Shinomori, starting with Kamen Rider, and then... Super Sentai, and then the relationship that Toei had with Marvel to produce some tokusatsu shows, the interest uh, within Marvel to take it and potentially adapt it for an American audience, and of course their efforts failing. Then Haim revisiting that idea himself some years later and actually being able to actually execute and uh, have it put on a network. Yeah, Haim Saban was in the episode, just so you know, Dave Marks. Yeah, he is in the episode, which is surprising. I was very surprised because when I was filming for the episode, um, I had gotten to talk with the crew, and the crew did tell me that they had managed to get a hold of – they they managed to film Haim, and I was very surprised by that because Haim is very hard to get a hold of. It's very rare that he does any kind of interviews – um, it's very rare that he does any kind of public appearances unless it's for something that has to do with um, some huge business venture or some huge political venture. He rarely is out there doing stuff is, you know, he's really out there doing any kind of public appearances just for the sake of it. He's a guy that just, he's very particular about what he shows up for. So the fact that they were able to get him for the show was very surprising to me. And uh, supposedly, uh, according to the producer, uh, uh, Brian Volk Weiss, he, he says that Haim actually reached out to them. Who knows? Maybe that's true. I'm not, not entirely sure. But the fact, again, that they were able to get Haim on board is very interesting. So, yeah, Haim, Haim, was, Haim has always been primarily a businessman. But um, like I said, he's a guy that's very, 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 very busy. And then getting any amount of time with him was was very impressive and of course as we saw in the episode majority of the time or majority of the scenes in the episode Haim is in them you know tell talking about it telling out how I brought it over and things like that so but like I said there's there's a little bit of revisionist history there for for Haim and in some of his retelling of it maybe or maybe maybe to be fair maybe he just thinks that he's the one that came up with the idea for intersplicing um american actors with japanese footage maybe it's maybe it's possible that he really believes that he came up with that but it's it's not backed up by by history unfortunately for him so um that was interesting um i was surprised at the amount of of my scenes that they used in it i thought because the thing was i it's not something that it's something that i announced back when i was finally able to announce it but you never know with these things, right? You never know if they're going to keep your scenes or not. Um, and that's why I didn't really 
broadcast it too much that I was going to be in the upcoming season just here and there because um, I could have ended up on the my, – my scenes could have ended up on, on the cutting room floor, right? They could have completely taken my scenes out. And from to the best of my knowledge, there was other people that they talked to that just didn't make the cut at all. Um, and, and they told me some of the people that they talked to. So I was surprised. I wasn't surprised by the people that I saw in the episode. I was more surprised by the, by not seeing certain people in the episode that I thought were going to be in the episode. That's one thing that really surprised me. So that was something that, um, like I said, that the entire thing, it was, um, it was surprising, I guess, is what I'm saying. But overall, good episode. Uh, moving on to the uh, My Little Pony episode, probably my least favorite episode, not because uh, it was a bad episode. I found it to be very informative. I uh, learned a lot about, a, you know, learned a lot about My Little Pony and things like that um, because I didn't really know a lot about My Little Pony. So honestly, and I didn't, you know, it's not something that, although I remember it growing up and I do remember watching some of the, uh, 80s cartoons growing up because they were part of the other Hasbro block of cartoons they would play. I did watch some episodes of it growing up because it was part of all that. Um, it's not something that I was ever really all that interested in or invested in. So I say it's my least liked episode just purely because of that, because of me not having much of an interest in it to begin with. But it was still a good and solid episode, informative. Um, interesting to see how when people come up with a concept for something, when they come up with an idea for a particular toy or whatever, they um, uh, it, it's so important for people to get credit for it that they're that they're willing to. I, I won't say fight for it, but it's just like it's it's always interesting to see how much people are willing to um, try to get you know get that recognition, putting their thumbprint on stuff, which is not a bad thing. That, that's not me knocking it, but it was interesting because in in the My Little Pony episode, there was two people, there was three people that claimed that they came up with the idea for My Little Pony, but you don't really get any clarity or any kind of proof or substantiation from either of them that they are the 100% legit creator of My Little Pony. There's like three people. There's this, there's this lady named Bonnie and these two guys that say, you know, I was the creator of My Little Pony. And it's just like, and all you have is just kind of hearsay. You have like somebody backing up each one of their stories that says, oh yeah, that guy created it or no, that girl created it. And it's like, okay, they don't, you don't ever really get any kind of clarity as to who was the one that created my little pony. You just kind of have to, I guess, draw your own conclusion from it because they don't really do anything to substantiate outside of people's claims. They don't really provide any kind of proof who is telling the truth. They just kind of leave it up to you to decide. So uh, let me answer some questions here real quick. Um, I think you did a really good job covering this. Thank you. Appreciate that. Great. Uh, Smunkin. Um, would you at least be fine with English dub or at Kamarai? If so, which Kamarai? Um, I, I wouldn't have a problem with an English dub as long as it's done well. And as far as which movie, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I would have to look through them and see but if he wants to take credit for keeping the Asian Ranger of Falsa. Um, let him, I guess. <laughs> All right, let's see. Hey, what's up, Charizard Ranger? I still like the 80s and 90s cartoon. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's fun. It's fun. Yeah, friendship was magic, right? Every good... Yep, that's true, Dave Marks. Um, but yeah, the um, uh, the whole um, uh, the whole thing with the My Little Pony episode was just that. That that I think was was probably one of the more more interesting things about that particular episode is all the different people trying to claim ownership over the uh, concept, over the idea, the you know the the creation of My Little Pony. That was that was all very interesting and like i said until the end you know it's it's kind of left ambiguous it's like like i said they they um uh, they lead you to draw your own conclusion it's like all right i guess you know this person says it this person says it, this person says it and they all have little bits of proof but not like unequivocal 100 substantiated proof that 
they are for sure the creator of that. So that's all very interesting stuff. But like I said, it was informative. Uh, the pro wrestling episode was one that um, was good as well. I like that they they mentioned a lot of wrestling history. They tied to it. You know, they talked about the Attitude Era and things like that. They talked about all the different kind of figures, you know, the good, the bad, and the ugly in terms of which companies were making the figures. Um, I think it's, it's pretty much well-established, at least in that particular episode, which figures people probably hated the most. Um, and I think it was that first one of Jack's, I think were the ones that were probably hated the most. That's before Jack's was really able to, um, hit their stride and really learn how to make the figures right. Um, I have a question. If power Rangers moves to Netflix in 2021, do you see Hasbro doing what universal does and release the new season a year after its original release on discovery family? Um, I, you know, I don't know. I guess we'll have to wait and see. I think if anything, them making the deal with Netflix will probably see shows be on Netflix a lot sooner. I think we'll see a lot more of the Power Rangers seasons show up maybe as quickly as they do like on Hulu, right? Like when, when Hulu does shows, they're almost they're like immediately, you know, uploaded after they've aired on TV. I think if anything, we'll see stuff on there faster. At a 12-inch pull string talking... Ho oh, you had one of those Hulk Hogan's? Those were great. I remember those. Hulkamania rules, brother. Does anyone else remember the WWE ice cream bars? I remember those. I remember those. Yeah, but uh, the wrestling episode, they did a good job. Like I said, going down the history of the figures. I remember the LJN figures, the the, the big old rubbery ones. I thought those were great. I, me and my brother had some of those uh, growing up. Um, I also really loved my favorite line though, growing up as a kid was the Hasbro line. I absolutely love that line, even though you couldn't really move the arms or anything like that. But the thing is the molds, like the face molds were great. They looked just like the wrestlers. I remember that. Um, they had that kind of cartoonish quality to them because they had, you know, the big upper bodies and smaller lower bodies, but those were so much fun. Like I had so much fun playing with the uh the Hasbro the Hasbro um uh, WWF figures. Those were fantastic. All all with the specific moves that you could do like you do clotheslines and things like that. I thought that was great. Yo, what's up uh Silver 29? Yeah. Uh yeah. Yeah, it seems like uh it's universally and that's the other thing too. It's not just a thing where it's the woke behind these movies it's because now critics are it's getting to the point where critics now can no longer they're they're kind of at that point where they can no longer deny that the reason why these movies are doing bad is because they are bad they're just not good movies and they're not a lot of them are at that point where they're not going to deny that anymore it seems like it seems like okay you know what you know, I was trying to be PC before, but, you know, I can't do it no more. Can't do it no more. Got to, got to start calling it like I see it, which is good. You know, that that's the way it should be. There should be integrity in journalism. There should be people telling the truth, calling it like they see it. If these movies are bad, say that it's bad. It's fine. Don't, don't try to sugarcoat the fact that they're bad just because you're afraid of a potential backlash from people that are going to be reading your opinion on it. The whole point of you being a critic is because obviously you have an opinion of these movies and um, you know people come to you because they value that opinion. So just be honest about it. The Sweating Rustlers. Oh, man, those were – yes, I do remember those. Those were gross, but they were funny. Yeah, I remember those. They had like the uh, – they had those ridiculously huge bodies – I remember those. Yeah, I remember those. You would pump the thing. You would, you basically put water in the thing, then pump them, and then yeah. I remember they, they were like called like sweat force or something like that when Jax made those, and they were like they looked like super roided out. I remember, 
I remember that. Like their bodies looked really, really roided out. And then you would squeeze the thing and like they would perspire. And it was, it's like, who, who wants these? <laughs> Two thousand angels is great, and they can't explain that. With, well, because the thing is, two thousands, two thousands Charlie's Angels wasn't woke. It was just again, it was sure it was a little bit of a, a girl power movie, but not in. It was not done in this obnoxious way. You know, what I mean, it was it was done in the spirit of fun. And here's the other thing too. You know, they embraced. They embraced it. They were women that were tough, but they also embraced the femininity of the characters i mean what's that one scene i think somebody shared it on twitter they showed one of the scenes with cameron diaz you know just being kind of you know a sensual um you know just seductive you know person you know i mean we're now that's like something that's shamed it's 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 okay for 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 a woman to you know ex express her 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 femininity, you know what I mean? And, and those qualities, it's, it's fine. You know what I mean? That That's honestly what, that's, what's going to, that's one of the things that's going to help bring men to the theater as well. Not just, and it's not just the thing that men, that is, that ogling the women is, is going to be the main thing that brings men to the theater because the truth of the matter is, um, again, there's people that become fans of these actresses. And again, if they want to just support their work, they'll show up. They'll show up for it. And again, like I said, Cameron Diaz was, I know that was a big reason why a lot of people that I knew were going to go watch that movie because a lot of people, they just liked Cameron Diaz as an actress. She could, like I said, she could do no wrong. She was in just about everything. She was in dramas. She was in comedies. She was in action movies. You know what I mean? She had such, you know, she's not doing much these days, but if you guys remember her glory days, you know, those late nineties, early two thousands, she was in a lot of stuff. And you could see that she had a lot of range for all the different roles she was in. Um, have you guys seen Vanilla Sky where she plays the um, uh, she plays the obsessed like stalker woman that stalks Tom Cruise in that movie? I mean, she was great. She was great as like this this um, as this like psycho stalker. You know, what I mean, she she played a, a very convincing role. You know, she had that bubbly attitude, but then she had that that crazy, you know, uh, you know um uh that 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 crazy you know sociopath well i would say probably more psycho well i guess it depends psychopathic or sociopathic but she just she was just like she was great how she switched that like just that whole um you know just friendly and bubbly at first and then that obsessed like you know if i if if i can't be with you nobody's gonna be with you and yeah man it was it was great like she she's she's a great actress Ready for the next tension time. I know it's going to be awesome. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to still working on it, trying to see if I could get it done. Oh, for those of you that are in the stream right now, I will be working on another docu-series as well. Hard at work on that one. Hopefully it's a tall order, but I'm trying to have either one of those done before the end of the year, either Henshin time or um, the other docu-series that I'm working on. I hope to have that done by the end of the year. And it's either going to be um, that or the other, it's either going to be Henshin Time or the other docu-series I'm working on. One, if not both of those, trying to get them done by the end of the year, but I think I'll only, I might only be able to finish one, and even finishing one is going to be a tall order, um, just because of how, just because of how uh, difficult it's going to be. JoJo would be worse than DBZ? What do you mean? Oh, you, do you mean in terms of uh, violence? She wasn't even being seductive. She was just having fun dancing in her undies. Yeah. Yeah, it was... It, it, but again, that was one of those things. That it's like, that's okay. That would be shamed now, though. People would try to shame that and say, oh, look, look at what she's resorting to. All right. Do you think that they'll put Spider-Man Homecoming and Far From Home on Disney Plus? Yeah, I'm sure they will. I'm sure they will at some time. You think you may get hit by possibly, possibly Charizard Ranger, but I'm hoping that that's something that gets figured out before the um, before the end of the year, uh, because you know that whole Copa business, uh, man, that's that's really going to suck for a lot of creators because even though th there might be things that they might deem as children's content, but you got to remember there's so 
there's there's so many nuanced things, right? Just you know, talking about Spider Man doesn't necessarily mean that it's that it's going to be a video that is suited for kids, because it could be talking about pretty heavy stuff within Spider Man. I don't know, maybe a particular Spider Man story arc where there's uh, you know, a lot of death and how it impacts people and things like that, or maybe something that's very psychological. And who do they have to determine what's for kids and what's not? Well, they're telling you now that you're the one that, that has to determine that. Okay, well, I've determined that my content isn't for kids, but will they uphold that? You know, they're going to have somebody coming in, looking over my shoulder and looking over the shoulder of any content creator here on the platform to see and to kind of, I, I don't know, I guess, second guess your own decisions on it and maybe um, put it as they see fit. But what gives them the authority to do that, right? Because they're trying to say you have the authority to do it by putting it in our hands and, and basically saying it's your responsibility now. But what's going to happen? Are they then going to go against that and say, no, we're going to decide after all? So about anime causing body image disorders with, oh, okay, okay, I got you. So I hope I don't get hit by COPA, but it's it's hard to say. I mean, it's, it's very possible. I hope not. I, I think that this is one of the biggest problems with YouTube is that they roll out all these different things, but they don't really give you specifics on anything. They just kind of, they kind of just throw it out there and, let the let the cards fall where they may. They, and the thing is, they they don't want to take personal responsibility if something goes wrong. So what are they doing? Like I said, they're putting it in your hands. But what happens if what you've put out there isn't good enough for their standards? Then we're penalized, even though they initially gave us the ball to run with. It's just like, come on, man. Hey, hey, what's going on, John Lemus? It's been a while. Exactly. That's a good point, Esme. That's a very good point. It's their job. It's their job, not ours. Exactly. And that's the other thing too. Parents should be parents should be the ones really looking out for what their kids are watching. That's not up to us to determine. You know what I mean? They they shouldn't just be putting a tablet in their kids' hands and letting them go ham. You know what I mean? That's very responsible. And that's what happens a lot. They put either a phone or a tablet in their hands or just like, here, just watch videos. And not worry about it. That's why there was issues before. I'm sure many of you remember the issues. I think it was from last year, the year before, where there was this um, all this weird content that was being geared towards kids that was, you know, semi-sexual in nature and things like that, you know, with like Spider-Man and Frozen and things like that. That was just strange. Obviously not kids' content, but it was being shown to kids and um Parents were were not really you know paying attention to any of that. Um, that's again that's not that's it's not really up to the side. Like I said, for the most part, I've marked my channel as not for kids because truth be told, my demographic is eighteen to thirty five. Anyways, my analytics kind of prove that too. It, it kind of shows that that's who watches my videos is is an eighteen to thirty five year old demographic. My demographic is not under eighteen from all my analytics. So if they come back and try to say like, well, Hey, we've deemed that your content is for kids. I'd be like, look at my demographics. You know, majority of the people that watch my videos is 18 plus, you know what I mean? So I would say that that kind of, you know, they've already, the people, the audience, y'all, my subscribers, you all have decided that my content is for you. You know what I mean? Is for, is for that older demographic. So I hope that when when it comes down to it, I hope that's something that they're going to consider is looking at people's demographics and, and truly determining from those demographics, okay, this person's content is definitely for an older demographic despite some of the things that are mentioned in it. It doesn't matter if I mention Power Rangers or Spider-Man in the video or whatever. Um, again, you know, that doesn't mean it's for kids. You know, and I've had guests here on the show, of course, as many of you know, that have used adult language when they've been on and things like that. Uh, again, you know, I don't ever try to say that that's, I, I, I like to consider my channel, yes, uh, it's a, just about anybody could watch it, but I'm not particularly making content for that demographic. I mean, I don't think I've ever made content thus far that has been that dumbed down. I mean, I'm sure there's, there's a, uh, so there's some degree of kids that do watch the stuff that 
I've uh, put out here on the channel. But again, for the most part, my demographic is that 18 plus demographic. So, and that's really kind of, you know, I, I take that into consideration every time I make a video that I'm talking to adults. You know what I mean? Let's see. Uh, speaking of the app, I hope they move their R-rated stuff from Hulu to Disney Plus. They use improved Predator, Winstand, uh, Hollywood Touchstone, kind of I don't know. Uh, well, Hollywood Touchstone Pictures, I believe, belongs to Disney. So probably you'll see some movies that are Touchstone that might go over. Yeah, yeah, that's not silly at all, Charizard Ranger. That could, that's it. That is a a very real possibility. Exactly, ask me. They are being lazy parents. I I signed the um uh, the uh, change.org petition, and I would strongly advise anybody else to do it as well. I mean, I'm not one really much for petitions, but this one I will share because I think this one is important, and this is something that does need to be considered. There needs to be um, more specific rules and a better way of establishing um, what exactly will constitute as what before they kind of just kind of blanket term everybody with this. So I'm going to share it here in the, uh, in the chat. If you guys could check that out when you have a chance, I appreciate it. And really, this is one that I would say, you know, again, I, I don't, I don't always um, share things to say. Oh, man, I don't think I can. Hold on. I think the link might be too long. Hold on. This is wild. The link might actually be a little too long. Uh, hold on. Give me a second. Let me see if I can find a, a shorter hyperlink, y'all. One second, because this is, this is crazy. Okay, here we go. I think this is a much shorter one. Federal Trade Commission. Okay. And here we go. Here's, yeah, I found a shorter link. So I'm going to share that with you all here in the chat so you guys can check that out when you have an opportunity because, again, I, this is important. You know, this this is something that can affect everybody here on the platform in various ways. Um, you might see a lot of channels get shut down because of it. So if you guys could check that out when you get a chance. Yeah, Elsa Gate. That's what it was, Be uh, B Bear Gaming. That's right. Yep. Yeah, all that creepy stuff. Um, oh, awesome, uh, John Lemus. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It is it is a scary time. It's a scary time. See, I've been... I've been a monetized channel since 2000, I want to say early 2012, maybe late 2011. I was, um, no, late 2011, I think. Um, I was one of the, I remember that I was part of that old guard of YouTube in the sense of, if you guys remember this, back prior to 2012, um, you had to earn partnership with YouTube. Basically, you had to get a certain amount of subscribers and views. And then YouTube, it, it wasn't a thing of, you couldn't apply for monetization. What would happen is, is that YouTube would basically offer it to you. You know what I mean? They would be like, hey, do you want to become a YouTube partner? Uh, you'll get AdSense and you'll be able to start making ad revenue on your videos. You would basically be selected, you know, based on your views and your subscribership. They would um, offer you monetization. So um, I was part of that old guard that uh, my channel was starting to pick up enough subscribers and views that they offered monetization to the channel here. So I was able to apply for monetization. And then just my luck, the very next year in 2012, they just, that's when they decided to make monetization. You know, they, they, they enabled AdSense for anybody to use on their channels. So, um, you know, from, from that point on, People, just about anybody that everybody that had a YouTube channel and was trying to make a career, I guess, off of YouTube, put AdSense on their videos, and of course that hurt a lot of creators because it, it lowered the um, it, it lowered the amount that, that they could potentially make on here because of that. Because it, it just you know it became that's when YouTube became really really saturated with uh, 
channels for just about anything. Yeah, that's crazy. Those fines too, it's just like nobody's going to be able to afford that. You know what I mean? My, your channel got flagged a little bit as, okay, well, at least that's good. Um, yeah, petitions usually don't. They usually don't. But, I mean, you know, um, hopefully, again, it'll just get more eyes on the story as it is. You know what I mean? And really get the FTC's attention. Suicide stuff. It's a... Yeah. That's that's the biggest, I think that's the biggest conundrum right there is the fact that they're letting creators, they're basically putting the onus on the creators, but exactly, they're also going to punish the creators too. On top of it, it's just like, okay, we're putting the responsibility in your hands, you know, um, but, um, you know, yeah, we're, we're, you know, if it's basically, yeah, you got one chance to get it right. And if you don't, if you don't, yeah, we're we're gonna we're gonna hold you responsible for it, and you're the one that's screwed. You're the one that's on the hook, which is to me that's irresponsible too. Because again, you know, if I'm making it clear that hey, look, um, you know, my I my I, I already told you my demographic. This is who I'm who I'm making content for. You know, what I mean, you have to. You know, I hope that that's something that they'll consider. That they'll look at it objectively and realize that um it's not a good idea they're gonna have a lot of unhappy people and um again you know this is one of those things that honestly you know this could really this could hurt youtube worse than any of the adpocalypses could in my opinion because of the fact that you're gonna have people be legally um on the hook for something that they might not truly or fully understand, you know what I mean? And you're going to put, you're going to put all this weight on their shoulders. And, you know, what if something gets overlooked by one of them, right? And they harmlessly, right? Put something up that is then deemed for it for a child. And then you're going to drop the hammer on them and they don't even know, they might even necessarily know what they did wrong or fully understand what it was that they did wrong in order to be penalized, but you're going to penalize them anyways. That's not really fair. So, you be, yep, exactly. Be bear gaming spot on. They need, they need to let parents be parents. Yeah. Give us 45 K nobody's and nobody's, I'm going to tell you right now, nobody's going to pay that. You know what I mean? And, and what sucks about it is if the government comes after people, they expect you to pay that they can ruin your lives. It's funny because when the government owes people money, they kind of drag their feet in order to give them the money. But uh, when you owe them money, they come after you tooth and nail to try and get every penny of it. Right. It's the same when parents blame TV for what their kids are watching, but forget there's a remote to change the channel if they don't like it. Exactly. Exactly. And that's the thing. That's all they have to do is just be aware of what their kids are watching here on this platform and make sure that their kids aren't getting into anything that they shouldn't be getting into. In this particular case, again, it, it's not hard to figure out whether or not a person's channel, right, has content for kids or not. Just watch a few of their videos. I mean, I, I don't think that there's anybody and there might be there might be some people that are pulling the wool over people's eyes that they're presenting themselves like we said before with like the Elsa Gate stuff, right? These are those are channels that were purposely misleading, right? They're they're putting out something that seems like it's for kids on the surface, but then you see, you know, when you watch it, you see beyond that, you see, okay, wait, whoa, this stuff isn't for kids. But again, that requires the attention of the parents. And once people are paying attention to those things, they're gonna know what's not for their kids after they've had a chance to sit down, truly pay attention to what it is that they're watching. They'll be able to make that determination. So parents are the ones that really need to step up in this case. Exactly. It's not, it's not on me as a content creator um, to, to, um, uh, you know, have to say before every episode, whether or not it's for kids, I think that's something that they'll be able to figure out. But again, if that's something that needs to happen, if that's the only thing that needs to happen in order to protect creators is that they just got to put a disclaimer before every video. I'm willing to do that. Um, you know, that's a small price I think to, to have to pay. 
uh, although I think it's 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 dumb either way. But at the same time, again, that's that's a concession I I'll, I'll gladly make. It's a compromise that I'll gladly make in order to avoid getting hit with a fat fine just because of again be, because of uh, of YouTube or somebody else determining that oh well your content really is for kids or whatever you know. Yeah, it was very weird. It was also very creepy. And, and just to think that there's people out there that just, that they, you know, that they thought to make that kind of stuff is uh, a lot of sick people out there. A lot of sick people. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And the thing is, that's what could potentially happen though too. It's just like, the, it could be worse than an apocalypse. It could be a literal mass exodus of people off of this platform and look youtube might have all these big corporations they might have the 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 msnbc's the cnn's the foxes of the world and things like that and and other show media sites that are paying them big money to be on this platform but the creators the independent creators they're the backbone of the site if you lose a mass amount of them that's it you know what i mean the the truth is these corporate sites right the, you know like i said the 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 msnbc's the foxes the cnn's they don't pull the numbers that independent creators pull on the site they just don't it's been proven 100 you know what i mean perfect example look at a guy like crowder as opposed to cnn's own news channel he laps them in terms of his numbers significantly too you know what i mean you lose a guy like that you lose pewdiepie think about that for a moment you lose a guy like PewDiePie. What if PewDiePie decides to leave? You know what I mean? Then what? You know, PewDiePie decides to leave. What if Markiplier decides to leave? What if all these big YouTubers, you know, Philip DeFranco, all those guys decide to leave this platform? Then what? You know what I mean? They'll be screwed. You know what I mean? They will be screwed. They need they need the the these non- um, corporate uh, creators here on the site, you know, to, to a lesser extent, the smaller creators, you know, guys like Gamer Thumb TV, the quartering, people like that, you know, they need them here on the site. Need guys like that. Off topic, do you think that the anime cause, do you think that anime causes body image dis disorders in boys? I'm interested in your opinion on this. No, I don't think so at all. I mean, look, at the end of the day, I think most people can differentiate, right? Reality from something that's fantasy. So, I mean, granted, I mean, it, 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 there might be some people on the spectrum that might have trouble with that, but for the most part, no, I don't think so at all. Um, I think that that's a, one of those false narratives that's out there regarding things like that, regarding, you know, trying to push this, uh, you know, this, that it, the issue of body dysmorphia and things like that, you know, I think that's one of those false narratives that people try to latch on behind and try to say like, Oh, this causes problems. No, I don't think so at all. You know, it's, it's like saying it's like with the whole video games thing, right? Hey, what's up? See the wave. Hey, what's up shadow. Thank you all for joining the stream. It's like the whole thing with, um, you know, violence, you know, violent video games causing people to be violent, right? There's no, there's nothing to substantiate that. And I think it's the same. Yeah, YouTube is getting worse, uh, Deck of Master Fan, unfortunately, with all these changes. Not only that, think about think about this too. This comes on the heels of the issue of people getting their accounts hacked on top of it. You know, the security of, of accounts here on YouTube. The fact that there's not enough security in place, how somebody can get their account hacked and lose their ownership just like that. There's not enough of a verification process in place to protect people from getting their accounts hacked and literally losing their, their, uh, their YouTube accounts. This is what happened recently with gamer thumb who is in here in the chat earlier. He had his account hacked, lost it for like two, two to three weeks before finally getting it back. Um, just like that. You know what I mean? Because of there not being enough uh, protection on these accounts. And then you got this with Copa now. You know what I mean? Oh, God. Dave Marks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's disturbing stuff.
Yeah, and that that's another problem too, John Lemus, um, is that they have no problem with it, – it's interesting, right, that they have no problem with these um, channels that push these very um, – these very specific agendas, right? They have no problem with that. And for the most part, let's let's look at those for, for an example too. Those channels usually don't get a high amount of viewership either because people that's hand most people don't care for that stuff. That's a again, we're going back to what I was saying earlier. That's a very vocal minority of people that are into that stuff. You know what I mean? For because for the most part, I would say it, it's it's pretty clear that that most people that are, let's say, I guess, think normally, don't get behind stuff like that. You know, what I mean, they they really don't. They don't care about things like that, and it shows in the numbers. The numbers never lie when it comes to stuff like that. That that's just it turns it turns them off. You could see it in the the like to dislike ratios of the videos. The like to dislike ratio, the comment section that tells you all you need to know right there. It's just like, yeah, what. Most people don't care for that kind of stuff, but yeah, th those channels probably won't be affected as much, but it'll be interesting to see, right? It'll be interesting to see what kind of preferential treatment some of those channels may get as a result of this whole COPA thing. Yeah. Yeah. Because again, you know, Dave Marks, because that's something, you know, Conan is something you can watch on TV and that's the thing. Those things that are that have kind of already been established, well established on television, are going to continue to do better on television. You know, I mean, the internet is an entirely different beast. It's an entirely different beast. So, absolutely, they do need uh, independent creators. What do you think of Majin Sentai uh, Kira Miger? I have not seen it yet. I will look into it a bit more before I make any uh, comments on it. See the wave. Nope. Uh, let me see. Hey, what's up, El Panda? Hey, saw you on Toys That Made Us. Yeah, that was me. Uh, hope you liked the episode. Hope you'll, uh, you know, share it around. Um, spread the word to anybody and, you know, hope, uh, like I said, ho hope you really enjoyed the episode. It was a lot of fun to make. So, Salisbury steak is good. It Salisbury steak is delicious. I love Salisbury steak. I blame Daddy of Five for all YouTubers' problems. Kidding, not kidding. <laughs> I mean, well, Daddy of Five was one of the earlier. Um, that was kind of one of the earlier. That that's kind of one of the ones that planted the seed, right? I think Daddy of Five was one of those channels that started planting the seed and started drawing attention to this. But you know what? It's a double-edged sword a little bit. Uh, we could blame Daddy of Five, but at the same time, it was kind of good that that um youtube started taking a look at, at situations like that but again everything is nuanced right they need to be they need to <clears throat> they need to be look they need to be able to look at situations uh, uh each situation objectively and decide what's the proper course of action instead of kind of setting these kind you know using these kind of um generalized rules because each situation is different everybody's channel is different. So this isn't a comment on Bruno and Mia's video, but I'll say it here and forgive my paranoia, but I think that this is a plot by the FTC. So the political agenda are the new dominant. I, you know what Charizard Ranger, I would not be surprised if that was the case at all. It's very possible. I mean, if you look at it, it, in a sense, it's another form of censorship, right? In a way, What's the status of the new Henshin time? Uh, still working on it. Still working on the script. I might have another docuseries out before the next episode of Henshin time. Uh, but I said it earlier here in the video. I'm really trying hard to see if I can have both the docuseries that I'm working on. I'm trying to see if I can have them both done before the end of the year. Although that is super ambitious because it, it's going to take a lot of work. I'm going to try. I might only be able to have one of them out before the end of the year. So it's just a matter of deciding which one is going to take priority over the other. Um, so, so we'll see, man, I'm, I'm trying really hard uh, to see if I could get them both done before the end of the year, but that's, that's probably not going to happen. It's probably not going to happen. What's up, Bowsett? Haven't seen you on here in a while. Thanks for joining the stream. Um, 
YouTube is going to be gone in a few years because of the heavy-handed knee-jerk reactions. And yeah, possibly. I mean, that that's the problem. It's it's one problem after the other, after the other, after the other. I mean, going back to what what they did with uh, with Crowder, right? With the whole you know apocalypse thing that they did with him. Um, it just keeps getting worse. It just keeps getting worse. And the thing is, again, uh, you know, you you really see it becomes very transparent how much YouTube cares about their smaller content creators when you see how long it takes for them to restore smaller creators' accounts after they've been hacked. And you see this whole thing with Copa now where they're they're really trying to paint things with a very broad brush. And not just that, just being very dismissive, right? Just being like, well, you know what? It's your problem. You have to you have to decide whether or not your stuff is for kids or not. We're putting the ball in your court. And they're making it seem like they they almost they try to make it seem like, oh, well, we're empowering you. We're giving you the ability to decide for yourself. But but really it's it's not that. It's them really trying to skirt responsibility, knowing that we make up the majority of content creators here on this platform, you know, the smaller content creators, the independent content creators. So they're just it's really them just saying like, here you go, and not having to deal with it. Uh, let's see. That's what I had. Corn and mashed potatoes. Nice. They only have released a name, but both my friend Ivan and I think that it will be another magic based. Um, yeah, probably. Probably. It's been a long time since it was a magic based Sentai, right? And so done the NBC's so non-paying customers. Yeah, exactly. That's a good, yeah, non-paying customers, right? That's that's a good one. Baked apples. Um, said because I found someone on YouTube was reliving, reviving an older college football game from the website. Sort of run a team and dynasty. I need moderator. Okay, I'm, I'm going to get to your questions now here. He said if it's our game because... Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're talking about Bruno, right? Charizard Ranger. Yeah, I saw what Bruno posted, and yeah, that's gonna that's gonna suck for for channels like Bruno, which is much more. My channel is called Toy Bounty Hunters, but if you've noticed, it's not. There's toy stuff on here, but I've definitely done a wider range of stuff. Bruno is very specific with what he does, so something like this could be devastating. This could be absolutely devastating for for a channel like Bruno's. If they decide that they want to um, just go ahead and say, well, you know what? No, we've determined that your channel is a four kids channel and there's nothing you could do about it. So, hey, what's up, Isabella Sepulveda? That is my last name as well. How are you doing? Um, and no, I didn't dox myself because my name is is uh, public knowledge. So, um, let's see. No, no, it's all good, Charizard Ranger. I mean, we could talk about whatever here. Uh, did I see the new Terminator? No, but I might have to. I might have to. Might have to just to see how bad it is. But I, I think I'm gonna wait till it's, um, out of the theater to to because I think that's gonna be relatively soon, right? I don't think that it's gonna be. <laughs> I don't think that the new Terminator movie is gonna be in theaters much longer. I think it's gonna be uh, readily available on a streaming site sometime soon i don't think it's gonna it's gonna last much longer on on uh in the movie theaters i think that's one that'll be on a streaming service pretty soon so uh let's see it's sure but your football it's gonna have to make sure you never say this show for kids and make sure youtube doesn't do it behind his back uh yeah we'll have to see and how the thumbnail looks like talking about the state of his chin oh you're talking about uh bruno i wish it you yeah um, you know what? Maybe I, I should reach out to Bruno and ask, you know, have him come on and talk about that. I don't know. I, me and Bruno have only met a handful of times, so I don't really know him that well, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe for a future stream, might, maybe it might be something, uh, to do. Football is full of million dollar crybabies. Oh yeah. It's crazy. What's going on with, with football right now. Right. With, with, uh, Colin Kaepernick, that guy really shot himself in the foot. Hey, what's going on, Mac? Yep, yep. That's my last name. Yep. YouTube needs to do yeah, they need to do a much better job. They really need to get their uh their stuff together. 
That's what I'm saying. I I think there's going to be enough of a public outcry, especially once people truly understand what's at stake here, that they're going to have to work with smaller content creators. I don't think they want to risk potentially losing. I, I I'll say I'll go as far as to say not thousands. I mean, I they are potentially risking losing millions of content creators um, over this. Yeah, my clay, my PlayStation Classic is well. No, it's not in the box. I have it set up over there. That's just the box. It's empty right now. Um, my my PlayStation Classic is connected over there. I just put the empty boxes for the stuff right up here, and the other stuff is um, uh, board games, and those are actually full. Those have the games in them. Don't waste your time on uh, Terminator Dark Fate, Bowsette. Well, this or Charlie's Angels. Yeah, well, you know, I may just watch it just for the for the cringe factor. Um, but like I said, not anything that I would, uh, watch in the theater. No, um, sports video games channels. Oh, okay. I see what you mean. Uh, I haven't, I've seen the only show that I've seen on, on the DC streaming service is uh Titans. And I thought it was okay. Surprisingly, I thought it was, I thought it was going to be a lot worse than it ended up being. I think it still has its issues. But it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be, surprisingly. What's up, not another game collector? What is up? Thank, thank you for joining the stream here. And I appreciate you all for being here on the stream very much. Thank you. Um, thank you for, for hanging out with me here for a little bit. Um, we're going to be going a little bit longer here. It's good to just touch base with you all. John, you up to date on the new South Park. I did watch the new South Park episode, the, the one that people were complaining about. I thought it was hilarious. And I echo the sentiments that everybody has been echoing. Look, South Park have been equal opportunity offenders since, what, 1997, 1996, 97, when the show first aired. Um, nobody is safe from South Park, like they keep saying. You know, they're equal opportunity offenders, and people forget that sometimes. Everybody laughs until they feel that, you know, um, it's their own. Th you could They could laugh at everybody else, but when it comes to stuff that they might particularly um, like, then they don't want it to be made fun of. And it's just like, look, you know, that South Park's MO. You know, um, there was times where I didn't like initially where they poked fun at Christianity, but I got over that real quick. I was like, well, you know what? They're equal opportunity offenders. You know what I mean? They don't, they don't just target anybody specifically. And if you think about something real funny here, if I don't know if you guys know this, but some of you may or may not already know this, but do you guys remember chef who used to be in South park, who is voiced by Isaac Hayes, the guy who would do the songs for the uh, shaft movies, the older shaft movies, you know, who is the man, you know, he voiced chef, for many years on South Park. And then he ended up having a falling out with uh, with Trey Parker and Matt Stone. And it was over the stupidest thing. Because Trey, Mark, because Trey Parker and Matt Stone did an episode where they made fun of Scientologists, that made Isaac Hayes mad because he was a Scientologist. And it's just like, well, you know, we make fun of everybody. It's just like he took umbrage with the fact that they made fun of Scientology. That's why he ended up leaving the show and he ended up getting written out of the show. You know, the episode where he gets killed and all that because he was, um, and they made fun of him. They made fun of his character in the show because of it, you know, of all the people of all the, so many years, them offending so many others. But when it came time to offend, you know, his, you know, his beliefs, he had a problem with that, but he had no problem when they were offending everybody else, only when it came to the things he believed, then he took issue with it. Ridiculous. What do you think about the 2019 film so far? Which one? Uh, what do you think about the all the oh all the 2019 films so far? Uh, best film of the year, my opinion, Joker, hands down, hands down, best film of the year. Good for action. That's about it. I still haven't watched Sharknado. I've never seen Sharknado either, but I've heard different things about it. Let's see. I'm trying to catch up with all your questions here if you all have any here. Let's see. Um, um, Rick and Morty. Never seen Rick and Morty. 
I appreciate you, uh, Dave Marks, and I appreciate all of you here in the chat. They even offended their own cast. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. They've nobody's been safe from South Park. They're like I said, they're equal opportunity offenders, and that's not a bad thing. You know, what I mean, it's fine. You know, what I mean, that's that's kind of how it goes with comedy a lot of times. And that's something that is ruining comedy now that people want to, you know, oh, we, we can make fun of all this other stuff, but you can't make fun of this specifically. It's just like, no, you know, what I mean, if they put it out there, it's fair game. That's it. Plain and simple. It's fair game. If they put it out there, it's fair game. I appreciate it, uh, Shadow. Uh, if you're talking about this channel, you're saying great channel about this channel. <laughs> no, I mean it, any other channel too. Have you looked into Jedi Fallen Order yet? I'm torn between. It looks good, but yay. Well, you know what the thing is, Devil Hunter? No, I've heard I've heard actually pretty good things about Jedi Fallen Order. Uh, people are saying despite EA, um, uh, I've, I've heard mostly positive things about it. I have to look into it a little bit more myself. I would say check out Gamer Thumb's review of it because Gamer Thumb is pretty honest about what he thinks about games. So um, I think if you want to get a, a good take on Jedi Fallen Order, a fair take, what I would consider to be a fair take, check out Gamer Thumb's channel. Check out his his initial uh, thoughts on um, Jedi Fallen Order. And Mikhail Casanova also, I think, gave a pretty um, honest take on Jedi Fallen Order. Because I know people have their issues with EA, but you know what? Look, got to call a spade a spade, right? If something's good, it's good. I can understand people not wanting to support EA. Um, but look, you know, sometimes EA gets it right. Sometimes EA gets it right. There's a lot of things they've gotten wrong, but sometimes they get things right. And I think it's it, that's fair to say about all companies that produce these video games. So show what the world can be. Chef from South Park. Yep, exactly. Isaac Hayes. They fell on his face. Well, I'm sure that that's ground they'll cover again. Sweet so <laughs> yep, yep. All right, let me I'm trying to catch up with, with everything y'all are saying here. Um uh, I mean I think a lot of us are gonna get um targeted. Okay, so fan comics. Uh let's see what I don't know about that. Scientology. Yeah, the Scientologist episode. Yep, that's what it took though. Tally was pretty funny. Tally, yeah. Tally in this last season, he's he's wild. He's just that dude's always high and tripping. He's, he's great. Yeah, Joker, for real. For those of you that haven't seen Joker, please, 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 please be sure to watch Joker. It's it, you know, it's a great movie, I think. I mean, well, I should say please be sure to watch it if you're okay with a movie that's not too action driven. If you're just looking for something that is good, that is, um, that is a, a, a true character study of, of mental illness. That is the movie you want to watch. I think they did a good job. Of course, there's things that are exaggerated because it's a movie, but for the most part, I've said it before. I'll say it again. Um, people looked at Heath Ledger as kind of the gold standard, Right in terms of portraying the Joker, I think that Joaquin Phoenix now, in my opinion, is has done the best portrayal thus far. Yeah, I hear you, John Lemus. I hope not. I hope not, too. I think that they could do one and done with the Joker, but if they do, keep it out of J.J. Abrams' hands, please. I don't. I think a lot of people are on the same boat. Uh, American Otaku. Nobody knows why they decided to do that. What do you think of Scoob and SpongeBob Three? Not sure if we talked about this. No. Um. I. We didn't talk about that. Um. Don't know. Um. Uh, not a. You know. I watched Scooby Doo cartoons growing up as a kid, but never really a big fan. And SpongeBob. That was after I was already grown. That that really kind of came into prominence. I do like Sonic's new look. I think that it was great that they listened. Uh, will I stream on Friday? Ask me to answer your question. Uh, yeah, I, I may. I probably will stream a couple times this week. I, I'm going to try to get back into a regular streaming schedule. Uh, I'll definitely announce it, so be sure to follow me on social media if you haven't already, to, at Toy Bounty Hunter on Twitter, and also keep checking the notifications here because I always post when I'm going to do that. But, yeah, I'm, I'll try to. But as far as Sonic's new look goes, I'm glad that they listened to people. That was the right, the right thing to do. 
I mean, look, at the end of the day, you know, they make these things because they're trying to make money, right? Try to put butts in seats, and that's what's going to do it. Listening to the fan base, taking what they say into consideration. And there's people that will look at that and say, oh, well, they're acting like entitled and spoiled babies over this stuff. It's like, look, if you're the one paying for something, there is a degree, yes, that sometimes the customer can be wrong, but for the most part, you gotta you gotta listen to the potential customer, right? Because most of the time they will be right when it comes to certain things. Uh, Sometimes I'm not saying always, but for the most part, you you have to be willing to make concessions in order to help your bottom line. And in this case, in this case, they're definitely helping their bottom line by listening to people. They did the right thing. They absolutely did the right thing by listening to the people because now their potential for revenue has grown exponentially. There's people now that are much more excited about seeing the movie, which was the point of the redesign, right? To see if they could bring in more people. There's people that are hyped for it. There's people that are now saying, listen, even if the movie's bad, I'm going to go watch. I'm going to go support it just because they listened and they took what uh, people said into consideration and they decided to say, you know what? We hear you guys. Let's change this. Is this better? And people, for the most part, the general consensus is, yes, that's better. Okay, cool. They met people. They did more than meet people halfway, I think. So, yeah. Yeah, he did die not long after that. Uh, Isaac Hayes did die. What is up? What is up? Let's see more people in the chat. You are correct. What is up, Aubrey? I know who that is. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that's another one too, right? That's, that's caught a lot of flack too is Alita Battle Angel, right? Let's see. You'll be watching Sonic for Jim Carrey? That's actually the least reason that, that I would watch it, but hey. Yeah, that's just me. I, I don't, I'm not a huge, huge fan of Jim Carrey much these days, but might still check it out. Could you do gaming streams? Possibly. I mean, if that's something y'all want to see, I wouldn't mind doing a couple gaming streams. If y'all want to see a couple gaming streams on here, um, I, maybe I'll put out a, a Twitter post tomorrow kind of um, with, with a couple games that I, that I could think of maybe like four games and you guys can decide what game you'd be more like you know, that you would want to watch me stream on here. So I'd, I'd be down for it. I haven't done a gaming stream in a long time. Long, long time. So be fun to do it again. Um, let's see. De Niro had a bit part in Joker. Didn't, no, he didn't. He didn't try to steal the, the show. And the thing is, De Niro's part in it was fine what it needed to be. It's funny too, right? Because... You see movies that De Niro has made that that one could look at, and um, a lot of people have said that uh, a lot of some of the inspiration for Joker might have been uh, Taxi Driver. So I could see that Death Stranding. I've heard a lot about that game. I don't know a lot about it. I'm gonna have to look that up. I'm gonna have to look more into that. I should say. I've been. Uh, let's see. Let me try to get caught up with you guys here. Will Power Rangers swing the cost of the transfer? Um, I think eventually El Panda, we, we will see kind of a little bit of a Hasbro extended universe where they will have, you know, um, crossovers like that, where they'll have, you know, Power Rangers and Transformers teaming up. I think that that's really what they're trying to go for, right? At some point. And I think those are the two most natural, um, fit for each other right off the bat. I think it's Transformers and Power Rangers. So. Let's see. Um, Want to get <laughs> tally? Tally is great. Tally is great. Always being high. Not sure if it can handle. It's crazy, right? What uh, Joker has been able to do. Most successful R-rated movie. Heath Ledger still my favorite. Heath Ledger, look, there's no dismissing what Heath Ledger did. Fantastic. He did a fantastic job, but man. Joaquin Phoenix, man, I don't know. That was pretty uh that was pretty baller. His his uh 
his performance was pretty baller. Sonic and Luke goes a win for the fans. Yep, absolutely. Double check that stupid bell. That's right. Make sure you all have your notifications on. Please. <laughs> all right, let's see. I'll be watching for... Okay, got that already gave me stream. Let's see. Let me just catch up here. Sorry, I'm trying to... What did you miss, uh, Patricia Bussall? Uh, nothing much. We're just having a little bit of a conversation here. Just been talking a little bit about everything. Just going a little bit everywhere here. Talked a little bit about uh, Toys That Made Us. Been talking a lot about um, some of the changes that YouTube has made, how it's going to affect creators. We talked a little bit about how uh, the wokeness of some of these movies um, haven't helped their bottom line, how they've really kind of adversely affected their their potential for earnings in, in the uh, in the box office. So Voltron is one that they don't they don't have the the master license for, I believe. Um, but if they did, could you imagine? Could you imagine if if uh, Hasbro got a hold of of Voltron? Forget about it. That'd be crazy. That'd be like that'd be overkill. And Gundam, poof, poof, that'd be wild. You do not like green eggs and ham. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. Thoughts on the new law for YouTube 2020? Well, big cool guy. Um, don't like it, and I hope that uh, they meet creators halfway. I really do because um, they're in for a lot of problems if somehow, some way, that goes through, and they decide that they're just going to completely leave it in the content creators' hands. It's not going to go well for anybody. You, I think you will potentially see you could potentially see the downfall of YouTube. And I know a lot of people have said that, oh, you know, well, the, it didn't happen when the apocalypse happened. I didn't expect it to happen when the apocalypse happened. I, I knew that things would bounce back. But when you're talking about something that, again, um, they're talking about terminating people's channels and potentially finding people, um, I think that there's a greater potential for scaring people off this platform when you have stuff like that happen. Or even worse, if you start following through with that and start telling people, Hey, you know, we're hitting you with a fine for not following FTC, FTC guidelines and this, that, or the other, you're going to see people just leave of their own accord. They're just, there's just going to be a mass exodus. They're going to be like, nah, 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 I ain't, I ain't dealing with this. And when they see that people are actually getting hit with stuff like that, again, that I think that will be the impetus to actually scare people off the platform where they'll be like, Oh my gosh, they're really penalizing people. Well, I don't want to be penalized. It's not worth me taking the risk of being penalized, let me go over to BitChute or let me go over to one of these other uploading sites. So I think that, again, and I don't think they want that. I really don't think that that's something that they want to risk. So they definitely need to come, so they, they need to come to some sort of compromise with creators here on the platform. If not, they're going to be in for a world of hurt. So let's see. Neon Genesis even Galen. Yeah, I heard about that. Uh Bowsette. Which Power Rangers team should team up with Transformers? Probably Zero or Turbo. Uh no. Uh, I, I think that um if they do a team up, it'll probably be in if they do it, it'll probably be whatever team is the film team, which is going to be a starting team. That's not to say that it's going to be, you know, the 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 Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. It's just going to be whoever I think ends up being the the first movie film team. Or maybe it'll be a Maybe they'll do somebody, maybe they'll do something current season, maybe animate a current season. Who knows? Uh, Bowser, I kept enough to watch NG after all that. Thank God I have a full, the full original series, even with Amanda Winley. Oh, yes, her. <laughs> Toys That Made Us, the Netflix series. I've seen it while adding new shows that was recently added on Netflix and I didn't get to finish watching you should go. You should watch it now, uh, Patricia. Uh, I think that you will enjoy the new season, uh, season three. You should check out the Power Rangers episode, particularly. That one was uh, pretty good, very good series. John, what do you think of the Nickelodeon and Netflix merger? I think that that is that opens up a whole new world of possibilities in terms of content, right? In terms of kids' content for Netflix, I think that. It opens up the possibility for them to not only 
not only uh, put old shows, older shows on the platform, but also they might do something, right, where they might revive some of these older shows. You never know. You could see a, a follow-up to Invader Sim and have it be a, a Netflix-only series. You could end up seeing uh, – I, I know they did that Invader Sim movie, but what if they made an entirely new Invader Sim series? It, I'm sure you all remember that was a very popular cartoon when it was on. They could end up reviving it for another season and putting it on Netflix. They could do it with one of the older Nicktoon shows, maybe do uh, an updated version uh, to Rocco's Modern Life or a new season of Rocco's Modern Life and put it on there. I think because I think they put the old series on Netflix, didn't they? Um, or we could end up even seeing a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, a new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles series that might be Netflix exclusive or maybe Power Rangers. I mean, we'll have to wait and see. <laughs> Mighty Woken Power Rangers. Hopefully not. Hopefully not. Hopefully that'll that that hasn't happened yet, but they've they've kind of dipped they kind of dipped their toe a little bit in that, I think, or maybe might have they might have tried they they might try in a in a movie. Hopefully not, but we'll see. All right, let's see. Uh, that's that's going to help. The merger is definitely going to help Netflix more than hurt it for sure. Courage the Cowardly Dog and Rocco's. Um, I got an autograph signed by Bulk. Nice. Yeah, uh, Paul Schreier, really nice guy. Really nice guy, very um, very accommodating, very willing to talk with fans, uh, very a very welcoming guy, very approachable. I've met him a, a, a few times, gotten a chance to hang out with him outside of just at a convention, and he's a he's a pretty down to earth guy. You hate Nickelodeon? Oh, why? The Rocco special, the first half made fun of the second half. Nice. In truth, Power Rangers has always been kind of woke. Um. Maybe, but not. Here's the thing, though. I would argue. I, I I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying with that, with the ethnically diverse cast. But it's never been something that. It's never been like this forced thing, right? It's never been forced. There's never been this forced idea. You know, the, the, these forced ideals. Um, in the show, it's just kind of been more generalized, maybe a little bit subtle. It's never been something that has been super woke, in my opinion. They don't try to force feed those um, politics or um, uh, or those uh, social issues, I think. But I can see a future where maybe potentially they could. And if they ever do, if they ever make it that obvious that they're that they're trying to force an agenda, that'll be the day that I'm pretty much done with the show. The day that they decide to go full woke and, and are and are not really hiding the fact that they're trying to be full woke, I'm I'm pretty much done with the show. That that'll be the day I'm uh, I'm probably done covering anything related to that particular topic here. And if I do, I, I, if I do, it, it would probably be just covering older things. If if I were to talk about Power Rangers, I probably wouldn't care to, to cover anything new. If that's the route that they were to decide to go, if they were to decide to force politics and an agenda into the show, I probably wouldn't want to get behind it much anymore because it's a kid it's a show for kids just let kids be kids that's that's my motto you know you don't need to force these these issues on kids that really don't necessarily understand them or even really care about them so let's see does saban still have the common rider license uh amic i i don't know that they do um it's it's hard to say. I mean, Saban's Master Rider, but that they might have only licensed uh, Black RX. I don't know if that extended past Black RX. So I guess we'll find out in the coming years. It seems like if you saw recently, the um, uh, Bluefin brands, they're taking a very big chance on common rider merchandise, right? By starting to carry the CSMs and things like that because those are high ticket items. So depending on how that sells and how much the demand is for common rider, it we could see another adaptation at some point in time. Whether or not it'll be through Hasbro, that remains to be seen. Yeah, I would say that. Um, exactly. I would say that it was more, I think that's a good way to put it, Dave Marks, that it was genuinely, genuinely inclusive, not woke. Yeah, I would say that that's probably a better way to put that. Yeah. 
So I don't know who has the licensing rights. Uh, uh, Amak, I, I have no idea. Let's see. Love the stream. All great stuff. Appreciate it, Bear, uh, B Bear Gaming. So believe me, if Toei got wind of Hasbro making Power Rangers go woke, the, yeah, um, I, I believe that too, Charizard Ranger. I believe that if they did that, I, I believe that's when Toei would probably step in. They probably would step in for something like that. What about VR Troopers? Uh, that would be fun, right? To see maybe a, a remake of VR Troopers. Oh, Dave Marks, if you haven't seen Common Rider, bro, oof, you need to start with, I would say start with Kuga, if anything. Yeah, CW did do Ryuki. They did the adaptation for Ryuki, which was Dragon Knight, which I thought was, a, was an okay adaption. It had its issues, but overall, I liked it as an adaptation, so. I don't need to adapt Common Rider, so yay. <laughs> Metal Heroes, yeah, that would be another one. Um, if they were to make the Green Ranger... Yeah, see, I, I don't think anybody would have an issue with that, uh, John Lemus, as long as you know you you, you do a, a good story. I mean, some people would probably have issue with it. I honestly wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't care. Um, I thought Hasbro has also bonds assets, which includes they do, they do. But again, Mast Rider uh, might there there um uh, that might only be for um. Uh, Common Rider Black RX, which is what you know Saban's Mass Rider was the adaptation of. It doesn't necessarily mean that they had licensed the uh, entire franchise after that, because if that were the case, uh, Common Rider Dragon Knight would have belonged to Saban Brands if they had, you know, gotten like the 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 um, uh, license for the series as a whole. Then um, Common Rider Dragon Knight would have been produced by Saban Brands, which it wasn't. I believe it was, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I believe it was produced by Steve Wang's. And I could be wrong about that. It was either Steve Wang's company or somebody else's. Um, so I forgot about Mystic. Yep, Mystic Knights was another great one. Um, I remember the first time the Green Ranger was shown. Yep, everybody remembers that. That was good times. That was good times. I remember that. Yeah, they showed that in prime time. Or no. Yeah, actually, they did. They did show some of the uh, the Green Ranger saga. They showed it in prime time. They also showed um, the uh, the beginning of the second season of Power Rangers was also in prime time. Uh, Beetleborgs was a bond brand, so that now belongs to Hasbro. That's one of the assets that went over to Hasbro. So at at some point in time, if they decide they want to make figures of Big Bad Beetleborgs, Hasbro can do that. They can do that, and they can they can make uh, Saban's Mass Rider figures as well, because I believe those are all assets that went to Hasbro when they when they bought um, all the stuff from Saban Brands. Yeah, Beetleborgs was fairly successful. He's got got front picture on Power Rangers. Oh, did he? I didn't know that. Uh, big cool guy. I have to look into that. SWAT Cats. Yeah, that was good stuff. I remember that. That was fun. That was fun stuff. Come right, uh, John. Do you remember Super? Oh yeah, I remember Superhuman Samurai Cyber Squad. I love that show. That show was one of my jams, man. I used to watch it early in the morning. It was on syndication. I used to watch it before uh, going to school. It was it was Superhuman Samurai Squad uh, in the mornings and in the afternoons when you got home from school. It was Power Rangers. John, are you looking forward to TMNT Power? Oh, yeah. That is something I am looking forward to. And just for y'all to know, um, I will be getting that comic when it comes out this Wednesday, and I'll do a review of it here on the channel. So for those of you that are interested, the TMNT uh, Power Rangers crossover comic, I'll definitely be looking into that. It'd be great. It'd be great. It'd be great if, if they uh, adapted a Kamen Rider series. Yeah, that, that would have to get an approval there. I guess we'll we'll wait and see. Yeah, it's not likely to happen anytime soon, I think. Yep, tattooed teenagers from Beverly Hills. Alien fighters from Beverly Hills, I should say. Uh, tattooed teenage alien fighters from Beverly Hills. I remember they used to get that on the USA Network. I used to watch that too. And I was just like, what the heck is this? 
that that show was a complete parody of uh, Power Rangers. It's great. They made fun of a lot of the tropes that were that was in Power Rangers. It's good times. Okay, well, I'm going to start wrapping up the stream here. Um, if you all want to ask a couple more questions, please get them in there in the chat. But I'm going to go ahead and start wrapping up the stream here because I got to work on some stuff. But, but um, I hope to get on a regular schedule of uh, streaming here once again. Another announcement I should make real quick here is that this Sunday at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I will be doing a stream. And I am going to have Stan Dolan and Erica McCord is returning to the stream. We're going to be talking some convention stuff. And I'm sure we could talk about maybe some of the, the, the Vic stuff and, and their whole year kind of in review and the stuff that they've experienced this year as a result of this whole, you know, Vic Mignogna debacle and things like that and how it's affected them. But they're also going to talk about, um, they're also going to, to be talking about, um, uh, you know, kind of their experience working together on AWA, which is Anime Weekend Atlanta, and a couple other things. So it's going to be very interesting to see what kind of stories they'll be telling here on the channel regarding their experiences together. That's going to be a, a great stream. So I hope, uh, you know, I'm going to share the um, uh, the information for that stream on on Twitter. Hopefully, you guys can can put it out there. But um, that's going to be a fun stream. Believe it or not, Disney was embarrassed by Power Rangers. Um, I believe I heard something of that to a degree, but they actually did some pretty good Power Rangers seasons. So for them being, quote-unquote, embarrassed by Power Rangers, they did some pretty solid seasons. They really did. So let's see. Somebody asked me a question here. Will you be getting FF7 Remake? Yes. Ask me, I will definitely be getting F, um, FF7 Remake. That is one of those... My wife... You know, she she loves FF7, so there's no way that I can avoid getting that. So she's probably going to play it more than me, but I'm going to come right come to English dub on Cartoon Network. I don't remember that. Does Saban own the Dry Metal Hero series? Dry was on. Um, I don't know, but who knows? Maybe, possibly. That's that's something that we can see maybe a um, uh, a release of. I guess we'll have to wait and see. But... um. Yeah, like I said, just, just to remind you all again, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, this Sunday, which is the 24th, Stan Dolan and Erica McCord will be joining me live here on the channel, and we're going to be talking about a bunch of stuff. It's going to be a really fun stream. I hope you guys check it out. I, I think we're going to have a nice little uh, convention discussion, maybe all talk about our experiences, but I'm really looking forward to seeing the uh, stories that Stan and Erica tell in regards to their experiences with AWA and with one uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Lying Pants guy that is now the owner of AWA. I, 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 I'm going to ask him a lot of questions regarding, but also I want you guys to be in the chat so you guys can ask your your questions about um, the uh, – the guy who is now running AWA, the CEO, Mr. Uh, uh, I forget his name. It, it, uh, what is it? Fazel Faker, whatever his name is, liar. Uh, the guy, the guy that is that has been a proven liar, time and time, time and time again, it appears um, that is actually a documented liar. It's going to be interesting to to get their take on him and what they think of. Uh, the stuff that he put out there. And also Stan recently went to AWA, went back to AWA. So I'm, I'm going to be asking him about that, about his experience there. So that's going to be fun. No, not, not the AWA wrestling promotion. Anime Week in Atlanta, which is a, uh, which is a uh, convention in Georgia. Yeah, that guy, Dave Marks. We're gonna. It, it's gonna be interesting to get their take on that guy and and uh, what their experience was working with him. So that's gonna be 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time this Sunday. I'll probably be doing another stream prior to then, so please be on the lookout in the notifications. But Sunday for sure. That's when y'all can't miss. 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Like I said, I'm gonna be on with Stan Dolan and with Erica McCord. So be sure to. Tune in for that one, but uh, also just 
make sure you have your notifications on and, and check the channel here because I'm trying to get back to a regular upload schedule of putting content on here every day, but also um, going to be trying to stream again more often. But this is where I'll go ahead and wrap things up. I appreciate you guys uh, being here in the chat with me. It was, it was great talking with y'all. As always, um, appreciate you very much. Thank you for hanging out with me for a bit and just chatting it up here with me about the things we talked about and uh, the, the League of League of Legends when you said Faker. <laughs> yeah, but um, I'll catch you guys later. Thank you so much once again for joining me. And yeah, I'll catch you guys on the next stream.